Okay, everyone. Um, I'm going to go through uh, how I clean my rifles real quick here and just kind of show you guys what I do. Um, just set up on my back porch here. Got my Ruger Precision Rifle. So I'm going to kind of jump through it. Um, what I'm going to be using for a product here is Bortec Eliminator. It's, um, it's a really fast acting cleaner that doesn't have any ammonia in it. So you can actually leave it sitting in your weapon overnight and uh, not have to worry about it um, about it eating into the metal. So anything else like you know hops or something like that that has ammonia, uh, unless they've gotten rid of it, I would really stay recommend staying away from it because it'll actually degrade your barrel and, and cause that barrel to, uh, to fail sooner. So first thing I do, tell everybody, it's carbon fiber cleaning rod, nothing else, no steel, no coated steel, just carbon fiber. Unfortunately, they come with a brass end. I wish they would switch to uh, aluminum, but for whatever reason, they use brass. So one of the things, or one of the reasons I wish they would switch to uh, aluminum is because Bortec Eliminator has a blue indicator in it that actually tells you if you've got copper fouling. And it'll actually give you a false positive off this to, a, to an extent, even though it's brass. So the tools that I use for cleaning are a uh, steel and aluminum brush and an aluminum jag. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to run a eliminator soaked patch through the barrel. And the reason we do that first rather than scrubbing is so that we give it a wipe and try and get as much of the, um, the sort of abrasive material out of the, out of the barrel as possible. So I use a little cup and uh, that helps me to kind of capture, you know, or allows me to soak a couple of patches, it allows me to um, capture anything that I might soak, you know, get on the brush. It allows the brush to actually sit in it too, right? so you don't actually use as much. Like this one liter bottle will last me, well, I think that's been going on, on for a year and a half now. Oh, and before I forget. I'll actually use a bore guide here. Never ever clean without one of these. It's um, I can't even remember what it's called. It's uh, this is well, this is actually meant for a Remington. It's um, a nylon Delron. It's actually supposed to have a uh, an O-ring here, but the O-ring fell off a long time ago. Um, what this does is it actually stops you from dropping cleaning fluid into the trigger and into any other mechanisms. And it also helps guide the, uh, the cleaning rod. So, put this into the back of the action. Just to make sure you guys can see that. Grab a, a soaked, eliminator soaked patch. In this case, I'm actually using a 223 patch, but the larger 308 ones don't go through. So I'll just run that through, and uh, just a second, I'll show you what that looks like. And you guys should be able to see that there's little, see that brilliant blue, and you get some lighter blue, you got a little bit of carbon fouling. Um, this tells you a lot of stuff as to what's going on with your barrel. Now, believe it or not, that's after about 100 shots. I didn't actually need to clean the rifle, but I wanted to show you guys know what was going on or how I um, how I clean so the only time that I'll clean frequently is when a barrel's new and I'll do like a cleaning um, you know fire a shot clean it fire a shot do that five times and then I'll switch to like every five do that up to about 20 and then after that I might do it like once again at 20 and then after that it's like every hundred or you know whenever you see your um, accuracy start to degrade it's working fairly well with me. I've done this for um, three or four rifles, uh, and it's and I've had really, really good luck, if you want to call it luck, uh, with how accurate they've been, uh, including my AR-15. And so what this is telling me that my barrel, it's actually telling me that my barrel is uh, is is broken in, that it's polished, that it's really good. Carbon's not building up on it. It's telling me that the powder I'm using is burning really well. It's telling me that the powder is burning completely 
because I'm not getting a whole bunch of carbon fouling in it. So I'm really happy with the, the load that I've developed for my uh, Creedmoor. And while I'm, while I'm sitting here talking, this stuff is actually, you know, eating away at any, um, any uh, copper buildup or fouling that I have in the bar barrel. And then, you know, after a few minutes or 15 minutes, uh, I probably won't do that long now, you'll see that when I scrub this thing out, I'll get, you know, a bit more crap out of it. Um, but then a couple more cleaning patches through it and the thing's done. So altogether, you know, total labor involved is just like maybe two minutes or something like that to actually clean this barrel because of how well it's broken in. It, and like I said, this patch is actually, it's telling me stuff. It's telling me a lot of information. So like I said, this, this little patch, patch right here is telling me a lot of information. It's, it's telling me how much buildup I'm getting um, from copper fouling and from carbon fouling. And as you can see, the carbon like is next to nothing. So that's a really good sign. Like I said, I'm happy about that. So let's get back to the cleaning. And another thing I should mention too. So when I'm, when I'm running the brush through, I'll listen and I'll make sure that the cleaning rod is not actually running on the rifling. And you, you just sort of develop an ear for that. You'll know because it'll make a scraping noise. So my brush is soaked. It's been sitting in the fluid here, you know, and I, I might have a teaspoon of fluid in that, that little container. So I'll like run this through about 15 times or so. And I should mention too, I've got my scope caps on so that I don't actually spray any of this uh, cleaning fluid onto the lenses of the scope. That'll destroy it. Um, it'll take off whatever coatings that they have. Okay, so that's done. If I wanted to do a really thorough cleaning, I'd throw another wet patch on it, run it through, but it's not really necessary. Uh, what I would recommend doing especially if you've been out shooting in dusty conditions, is I would recommend um, get, a, get one of these, these brushes, get a larger patch, like such as this, that'll wrap around it, and then scrub the, the chamber out too. Make sure that you're getting that cleaned out too, because you can get dust and debris and a bit of buildup in there too. So. I'll just show you what I mean here. So I'm going to, in this case, I'm going to use, I'll just use the brush again, but I usually switch to like a handgun brush or something that um, is a little bigger, but this will be sufficient. And you'd be surprised sometimes, especially like when I'm out shooting in really high winds, how much crap there is in the chamber. That's all from the chamber. So that's that's dirt, that's debris. You know, I try and avoid that, but obviously you can't if you're lying on the ground, you're you're kicking crap up or you're shooting in 30 mile an hour winds or something like that. So that's that's a lot of crap. That's that's you know, and if it gets worse than that, it's gonna start affecting your um, your accuracy. So then, like I said, I'll take a, a dry brush and a clean watt, um, piece of patch there, and then I'll, I'll wipe the chamber out because you want the chamber to be perfectly dry when you're done. All right, so. Got some dry patches. I, I pull all the um, the extra cotton bits off the edges of the patches too because you don't want that sitting in your chamber or um, in your rifling or action or something like that. So your first couple of patches are going to go come through and they're going to look dirty because you've got fluid that's still left in in the in the bore guide here.
and I forgot to mention too, before you start this, you don't fool yourself or you'll be there all day. Give the, the cleaning rod a wipe down to get all the dirty fluid off of it. So that's what we're getting after a few minutes of this soaking. I like to talk to myself sometimes too. So yeah, I pull all that extra fuzz off there because you definitely don't want that in there. That could be enough for an obstruction and you could have a real bad day. I've heard of brakes being blown up because of that. Also too, you can get, you want to be careful too, you don't want to just sit there and clean all day because you can actually, if you have a brake on there, it'll hold it, it'll trap a lot of carbon. And uh, so that's what I'm getting. A lot of that I believe is actually from the brake on the front. So that barrel is nice and clean now. And you can see there's no blue, so I've got the, the copper out of there. So yeah, total of a couple of minutes. And that's, that's really about it. Um, get yourself one of these uh, these uh, bore guides. Use one of those religiously. Uh, when you're in the field, carry um, carry like a boar snake or something like that with you. Uh, we had to use one last weekend because we had a whole bunch of wind gust up and chucked a whole bunch of sand and grit into the, the rifle. I was not very pleased about that because we were like two hours from home. So. That's about it. This is a, this is a tipped in cleaning rod. There's other brands available too, but this just happened to be what I had to buy when I was in Montana. And uh, I hope that helps guys. So I'm going to jump right into another video here.